Hey everyone, Jamie here from technicalcafe.com. Welcome to your fourth CSS tutorial. In the last two tutorials, we talked about both elements in ID selectors and how we can use them in CSS to style, um, in the case of elements, every th element on the page, such as every paragraph on the page or every anchor element uh, or hyperlink on the page. And in the case of IDs, how we can style a one particular paragraph or one particular anchor or link element uh, within a CSS web page. However, uh, what if you wanted to actually create a web page and style some things with the same uh, CSS rules and not others? Um, so in the case of this, instead of creating multiple rules for the same thing and just giving them all IDs, we could create one class and then apply that class to the things that we want to style. Um, that way we don't have to create multiple uh, CSS rules or uh, ID selectors or have to style everything. Um, so th this is how we can go about using classes, and if this sounds a little bit confusing, uh, don't worry, we'll get into the code and you'll see how it works. Um, so this is basically the same web page that we've been using for the last couple tutorials, um, only with a couple slight edits, uh, such as the tutorial name and what we're learning and stuff like that. And I also added in here, uh, here are some links below, uh, just to show you, since we're going to be using classes, we need to have... Uh, I figured we'd put a couple more things in there just so we can see how it works. So if we come into our code here, um, again, it's pretty much the same code as the other tutorials, uh, except for this here and uh, what we edited. Um, and we also have our external style sheet linked in using a link element, um, and it's referencing the, referencing the styles.css uh, page that we've set up in CSS here. So um, here's that page. It's empty, so nothing's really affecting this. This is all default. Um, we have one visited link and one active link. So let's get in here and let's uh, start creating classes. So in order to create a class, and uh, the class that we're going to create is going to change the color of um, the, a paragraph. We're going to change the paragraph uh, text. And what we're going to do is we're going to create one class and apply it to two of these paragraphs here. So we're going to create a class called, um, we'll call it font, and we'll change the font of uh, this here, and we'll change the font of this here. So uh, nothing too advanced or too interesting, just uh, to show you how the selectors work. So let's come into our styles.css docu document here, uh, which is again referenced here, so it's going to be applied to anything in here. Um, so we'll come in here, and in order to create a class, uh, similarly to creating an ID selector, all you need to do is append uh, a dot and then the name of the class. So it's dot name, whereas if you were using an ID, you'd use uh, a pound sign and then the name. So uh, just think to, something to keep a, be aware of. Um, a hashtag or pound sign uh, indicates a, an ID selector, and a period or a dot indicates a class selector. So uh, let's create a class and we'll call it font, and we'll create a code block. Nothing's changed with the code block there. Um, so basically every uh, selector that you're going to be using is going to require a code block. And we'll just come in and indent just to make it look nice. So uh, for this, uh, cla this class selector that we're creating, uh, what we want to do is we want to change the uh, font, the way the font looks for the so the paragraphs that we're going to apply this to. So we'll say uh, color, and we're going to change the color to, uh, let's say, blue. And we're going to, let's say, make the text bold. So we'll say uh, text weight, font weight, I believe. Yep, font weight, and we're going to say bold. So what we're going to do here uh, is whenever we apply this class to something, uh, it's going to be, it's going to change the color of whatever it is to blue uh, using the color attribute and the value of blue. And using the font weight attribute in the value of bold, we're going to change the text. Uh, so all the text that we apply this to is going to be bold. So let's save this. Come over here. Uh, and let's now, in order to add a class to our, um, our HTML code, similar to the ID selector, we need to come in and actually edit the element that we'd like to apply the class to. Um, so when we were using ID, if you remember, we'd come into an element here and we'd just add an ID attribute and set it equal to the name of the ID. Um, so this is pretty much what we're going to be doing for the class, except we're going to set it equal to class. We're going to create a class attribute, and we're going to set it equal to the name of the class. So the class that we created is called font. And um, when you're setting uh, a class, you don't need to include the dot in the thing in the uh, attributes uh, value. You just need to include the name. So uh, just don't include the little dot there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to save this, come over here and refresh, and you'll notice that we have some bold blue text, which we created. Um, the rule for in our styles.css page. So this is how we can go about using a class, but let's say, for instance, we wanted to apply this class to more than one paragraph. We can also do that by just adding the class equals, and then some quotation marks here, and then the name of the class that we created. So we come over here, and if we refresh, you'll notice that we have the same rules applied to uh, two different uh, paragraphs within our HTML document. Um, so this is a little bit easier than having to create two different rules and applying an ID uh, to those 
two paragraphs, or it's a lot better than having to create um, an element selector and having every single paragraph be blue. Um, though surely if we wanted to do that with a class, we can just do that, class equals, and then font. So there's no limit to the amount of things you can change with one particular class. Um, but uh, it's useful if you want to make some things one color or change it this way and other things a different way. So uh, let's just get rid of this in our second paragraph here. I'll save that, come over here and uh, edit that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another class for the We're Learning CSS. So let's come into our styles.css and we'll call this one, uh, we'll call this one green, dot green, even though it appears red. It's a little awkward, but uh, so we'll say dot green and we're going to say color equals or color colon green. And we're just going to save that, come over here and add that to our uh, existing or middle paragraph here. So we'll say class equals and we're going to call it green. Um, so you don't have to name it green or font, you can name it whatever you want. Um, so we'll come over here and refresh, and now we have some green text here. And the same also holds true for hyperlinks or uh, headers. You can create a class to edit those as well. So let's say we want to create a hyperlink that is, uh, we'll say black and underlined, so we'll call it BU for black and underlined. We'll come over here, and we'll say uh, color black, and let's say we want to create a class for something that's black and not underlined, so we'll say dot bu, or we'll say dot b for black and n for not underlined, and we'll say uh, color black uh, text decoration none. So this is setting the font color to black and the text decoration to none. So let's come over here and we'll say uh, for the google.com we'll make it uh, black and underlined, so we'll come over here and add our class class equals bu, and for the Yahoo we'll say class equals b and n for black and not underlined. So when we come over here and refresh, you'll notice that oop, Google didn't change. Okay, everything looks to be okay here. I'll just add a space there just in case. And bu, bn, ah, that's why, because we didn't add in the second s there. So now we have exactly what we specified the CSS code to do. Google has the class of BU for black and underlined, and it appears uh, black and underlined regardless of whether or not we click it. Uh, so regardless of whether it's active or visited. And Yahoo uh, has the value of black and not underlined regardless of whether or not it's visited. So uh, this is how we can go about doing that. If we create another link or maybe two or three more links, we can still apply these classes to those links um, without having to create additional classes or additional rules in CSS. So uh, a class is very useful for just reusing the same uh, CSS code multiple times without having to rewrite it for everything you want to apply it to. So that's basically how to use class selectors. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, you can also send me an email using the Technical Cafe contact form, uh, and that should be delivered to my email address, and I'll, I can try to get back to you on that. And additionally, you can email me or send me a message rather on Twitter uh, using twitter.com slash jamiemcg. And the Technical Cafe Twitter is twitter.com slash technicalcafe. Um, so if you like these videos, please feel free to subscribe, uh, rate, and comment. And uh, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.